<clears throat> Give you all a review for Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 10 Episode 8 A Mad Tea Party I don't have a question of the day Because given the topic of Like the main topic of the show Eh, I don't think anybody really wants to Like put something like that in the comments So don't have one for today <clears throat> and I'm gonna try to rush through this because it's like 6:20 right now, and like I have to physically be leaving out in an hour to make it to class because class starts at eight, which started at nine, but it doesn't. So <clears throat> as soon as I get done with this, I get like literally got to get cleaned up, changed all of the shit. So uh, start with Kenya. I'm getting ready for the uh, domestic violence uh, PSA. She said that at 16, she dated someone who was 11 years older than her, <clears throat> and uh, she was stabbed. So it's not just the one incident with uh, Matt, but it's also this. And for some people who have been <clears throat> been abused, if uh, they don't necessarily, uh, how can I say, like heal from it, they'll sometimes get into another relationship, not necessarily mimicking the last one, but one that, you know, it's probably going to repeat, you know, I guess certain mental aspects of the abuse. Uh, Shamia and Cynthia's mom are going to speak. Sheree uh, meets up with her because she's with the uh, director or the guy who's actually going to film it, I should say. And <clears throat> Sheree wants to be more of an equal partner. Uh, and, you know, uh, Kenya makes a joke about her being an intern, but it's just like, no. So they're going to work some, like, work some things out. But Kenya's whole thing is, since she's never... She, as in Sheree, has never, haha, <laughs> she by Sheree, has never worked behind the scenes, kind of giving her that experience to make her a little bit more well rounded. So we have Nene and Marlo. <clears throat> just cut this to the, I'm, I'm just gonna get y'all the motherfucking meat and potatoes for this. So Marlo feels that Nene and Portia should uh, come to her house, which no one has ever been to her house, but come to her house for a tea party. So, you know, they can move on. And Nene. Uh, from her just talking about the situation she just wants Portia to be grateful for what it is that she did for her mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we're the OLG and um, the um, the old lady gang themselves that actually have issues so um, let me see Joy's I guess she wants for the uh, hostesses in the register to be in a different location because it causes clutter. <clears throat> Let me see. Bertha. Was it Bertha? Yeah, Bertha wants the cooks to, you know, I guess, cut, like, I guess come to work in, I guess, like, super duper 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 clean clothes and also not have their pants hanging off their ass. Pants off, hanging off their ass, I can see. I will say, if you're going to be a cook, I mean, you don't want to be wearing your freshest shit because you're going to get the shit dirty, especially depending on what you're cooking. But, and I only say that because I actually have worked, you know, in a cafeteria and whatnot behind the scenes. But, you know, I don't judge. And then Nora pretty much wants the uh, hostess to uh, all be in uniform to, I guess, signify that they are hostess. And Nora and Bertha both were, um, in <clears throat> uh, that field so their input is very uh, paramount and they also talk about them needing to um, get a new general manager and later in the episode they do meet with a guy and the one thing I'll say that stuck out is that you know he actually had done his research on the plays he did throw out there that their uh, rating is anywhere from three stars and then they go like same I think like 71 to 75 percent is three stars and below but the fact that he did his research actually shows that he wants a job, which is a you know tip. If anybody going for a job, you might want to research the job that you're going that you're going for, to show that you at least have some type of invested interest in it. <clears throat> so Portia, we see her flirting with uh, Ricky at the job, and Marlo calls to you know personally invite, even though she sent the invite, wants to make sure that she actually got the invite. Sheree and Candy are at her house. They talk about um, <clears throat> Sheree talking to her kids about the uh, domestic violence issue. And then Candy decides that she wants to be the bone carrier this time to uh, let her know that when she spoke with um, Nene back when they went to San Fran, that she said that um, Tyrone was a icon artist. So. 
now you have um <clears throat> Sheree who's just like okay well everybody has a past and apparently both uh Nene and Gray have both been locked up in the past so her whole thing is we're not gonna sit here and start exposing passes because I could do that too and if y'all wonder about all this right here I, I did just wake up and this is actually more of my natural speaking voice but I try to speak a little bit higher to come off less intimidating especially on the job so yeah <laughs> um let me see so now we're at marlo's house so it's marlo nini cynthia and portia marlo and cynthia both feel like okay we both had our issues with um nini i think it was 10 years that nini and um <clears throat> marlo didn't talk and then it was a good two years for her and cynthia only difference is especially with the whole cynthia and portia thing she literally tried to get Cynthia fucking fired. Like, tried to take food off her plate intentionally. Wasn't really that intentional with Portia, but <clears throat> it is what it is. You know, they want to talk about it. Portia's whole thing is that, you know, you call me a little sister, and there were times that we spoke, you know, sometimes five days out of the week, and... <clears throat> I did what I could to support you. If you were on Broadway, I went to see you. I uh, even, you know, was set in the show. Uh, when you were doing Dancing with the Stars, you know, I was sending out tweets to try to get people to, you know, <clears throat> call in, support you. And then this whole thing is, well, that that's not really going to necessarily do it. You know, you can't just tweet. Tweeting doesn't show support. And honestly get to a moment I mean so then Nene says to her well you know I will text you call you and reply Portia like well it was only two texts text messages and this is one of those where even if it was only two <clears throat> now I'm not here for Nene in this situation but even if it was only two she could have just owned it because it's one of those where it's just like own, own what it is you did regardless of how minuscule and just move past it but she didn't and Nene did her little Nene of, you know, what if I did this, da da da, da kind of did a Porsche to Porsche, just not really <clears throat> owning up to anything, but it's like, you know what, fuck it, we just gonna let it go, let go, let live, let God, that whole type of thing. And, you know, it's just like, all right, we really didn't get anywhere. And I, fuck, I had a point that I was, I was gonna try to make, <laughs> and I totally fucking forgot. Oh, well. <clears throat> uh, moving the fuck on. Uh, the, uh, so pretty much at the end now. Oh, okay. So um, the domestic violence at production. So you have Shamia. She gets her. So it was uh, her previous marriage. Uh, it was uh, their anniversary, and he was being very short with her. And the issue is that she had won a girls trip, and he was um, <clears throat> I guess he he was very insecure because he felt that okay. She was, you know, screwing around with some dude while she was there. And I guess he was all up in the face with the thing and everything. And then I guess she got fed up. It was like, you know what? Yeah, I did do it. More or less just antagonize him. But it's one of those where he was already heated. And I'm pretty sure no matter what she would have said, the end result probably would have been the same. And he pretty much strikes her. And she pretty much said that her shoes was over here <clears throat> and she was over there. And... You know, one thing I will say is, I, no matter what y'all want to say about Kenya, she is great at directing, and the fact that she was even able to, you know, coach both her and Barbara, who is Cynthia's mother, I talk about her momentarily, you know, to help them feel comfortable to get to that vulnerable place was amazing. <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure that we're probably not going to see the PSA until, like, the very end of <clears throat> the Housewives of Atlanta, you know, during a reunion, so, yeah, whatever. Um, let's see what else. So, Barbara talks about her, so she, um, oh, Lord, I didn't, what the hell? Okay, she, um, uh, had dated her, uh, I guess, first husband six months before they actually got married, and there was emotional and physical abuse there was a time that she had got so fed up that she actually had a knife and sort of kind of had to talk herself down and even just had to you know realize that this isn't worth it and this is not where i need to be and even say that there were times that both her daughters were present during you know these spats which 
Uh, um, I don't think Cynthia has ever dealt with domestic violence, but this is one of those things where, you know, when children see stuff like this, <clears throat> they tend to mirror themselves in um, relationships where, you know, if you see your mother getting beat or whatnot, you know, if you're a guy, you think, okay, well, this is how I, you know, show love to my significant other. If you're a female, you know, it's one of those where it kind of writes it in your head like, okay, this is what love is. So I'm hoping that, you know, um, Cindy and her siblings, you know, were able to break that chain. But Barbara's whole thing is just understand that it's not worth it. You're worth more and walk away from it. Sheree was supposed to have been there, but she had got into a car accident. And I guess she has a bulging disc and she was in traffic and it came to a sudden stop. She pumped her brakes to stop. The person behind her wasn't really paying attention. We're in her, so she was uh, in a great amount of pain. But Sheree wasn't necessarily sharing her story. She was just reading from a script, but she was able to get up there and do that. So it seemed like um, it's going to be a pretty decent thing next week. They didn't brought back Cam, so I'm not really going to be here for it, but we'll see. Like I said, they could have aired this shit last week. We wouldn't have gave two fuzz of this shit. Been dry any motherfucking way. So, uh, that's all I got. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. The next video should be Love and Hip Hop uh, Miami and New York. There's a strong chance that you'll probably get Miami the same time that you'll get this tomorrow. And you'll probably get uh, New York later in the afternoon tomorrow or later in the day. Because I might not be able to get them both out given how short of a time crush that I have so I got out of here all right I'll see you guys later peace